happening again. What's going on, Carnby? That's what I'm trying to figure out here. Some gateways. Hey, my pixelated poltergeist. Today, we're diving deep into the shadowy corners of gaming history, where the cobwebs are thick and the jump scares are plenty. Buckle up as we unearth the crypt of Alone in the Dark, the game that didn't just break the mold, it practically invented it. Imagine, if you will, a world without our beloved survival horror genre. Feels more like a tragedy than a thriller, right? Well, fear not, because we're about to explore how this classic not only sparked a genre, but also kept gamers worldwide sleeping with the lights on. So grab your flashlights and let's get ready to explore the mansion of mysteries that is Alone in the Dark. And remember, in this game, even the shadows are scared of what lurks within. In the early 1990s, a small team at Infogrames, led by visionary Frederick Raynell, decided it was a great idea to scare the pixels out of gamers worldwide. Little did they know they were about to script the survival horror playbook with Alone in the Dark. This was a world where 3D graphics were as cutting edge as VR is today, and these folks decided not just to use them, but to blend them with pre-rendered backgrounds. This was the equivalent of mixing chocolate with peanut butter for the first time, an absolute game changer. The inception of Alone in the Dark was like a perfect storm in a teacup of creativity. Inspired by a twisted, eldritch horror of HP Lovecraft, the game was designed to immerse players in a world where the unknown lurked around every corner, and the unseen was far more terrifying than what you could see. This wasn't your run-of-the-mill haunted house. This was a dive headfirst into the cosmic horror pool without a life jacket. The game's development was a journey through uncharted waters, with Raynell and his team pioneering techniques that would define a genre. They used rotoscoped animation to give characters lifelike movements, a method as painstaking as trying to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded with your feet. But the road to creating this masterpiece was paved with more than just good intentions. It was a bumpy ride filled with technical limitations and the daunting task of bringing a fully 3D character to life in a pre-rendered world. The developers were like digital MacGyvers, using every trick in the book to push the hardware of the time to its limits. They faced challenges that would make lesser mortals quake in their boots, such as creating believable 3D movement and combat in a world where most games were as flat as a pixel pancake. The magic sauce? A mix of 2D and 3D graphics that allowed for an immersive experience unmatched at the time. Players could explore the mysterious Dercito Mansion, solving puzzles and battling creatures that seemed to leap straight out of Lovecraft's nightmares, all while navigating through an environment that was as beautiful as it was foreboding. This innovative approach not only set the stage for future survival horror games, but also proved that games could be just as atmospheric and story-driven as any book or movie. Hello? Hello? The game introduced us to Edward Carnby, a private investigator with a knack for getting into situations way over his head, and Emily Hartwood, who's on a quest to uncover the truth behind her uncle's mysterious death. Both characters are like two sides of the same haunted coin, offering players a choice but leading them down a path filled with eldritch horrors and puzzles that would make even Sherlock scratch his head in bewilderment. The plot thickens as our protagonists explore the foreboding Dercito Mansion, a place with more secrets than a politician's diary. The mansion is a character in its own right, with each creaking floorboard and whispering wind adding layers to the story. It's here that Alone in the Dark shines, weaving a narrative that's as compelling as it is creepy. The game draws heavily from Lovecraftian lore, infusing the storyline with a sense of cosmic dread and the fear of the unknown. Every corner turn could be your last, every shadow a hiding place for something unspeakable. But it's not just the setting that's innovative, it's how the story is told. Through items, books, various documents scattered around the mansion, players piece together the puzzle of Dercito's dark past. This method of storytelling was revolutionary, turning every found object into a potential key to unlocking the next part of the mystery. It's like being a detective in a horror movie, except you can't Help yell me. at the screen because Help you me. are the screen. 
The dual narrative paths of Carnby and Hartwood add replay value and depth, making the game not just about survival, but about unraveling a deep, dark mystery. The choices players make influence the unfolding of the story, predating the narrative-driven games of today by decades. Alone in the Dark didn't just set the standard for survival horror, it also pioneered the integration of story and gameplay in ways that are still being explored. Every culture's got a story about the end of the world, doesn't it? But not every story starts to become true. When it comes to gameplay, Alone in the Dark didn't just walk through the survival horror door. It kicked it down with the force of a thousand night terrors. Imagine a game that combines the brain-melting puzzles of a cryptic crossword with the combat reflexes needed to swat a fly in the dark. Now add in a healthy dose of What the hell is that? And you're starting to get the picture. The gameplay mechanics of Alone in the Dark were as innovative as they were infuriating. Puzzle solving? Oh, it had puzzles all right. The kind that made you question your sanity as it tried to figure out how a gramophone could possibly help you escape a room. And let's not forget the combat, with a combat system that felt like you were trying to perform ballet in quicksand. It taught the players the valuable lesson that sometimes running away is better than fighting, especially when you're up against creatures that look like they've been on a diet of pure nightmare fuel. Exploration was another key aspect, with the mansion sprawling interconnected rooms proving a veritable playground of terror. The game encouraged a careful, methodical approach, rewarding those with patience to scour every nook and cranny for clues and items. This was not just a game you could rush through. Every step forward was a victory against the dark forces conspiring to keep you trapped in their seat those clutches. But the true genius of Alone in the Dark lay in its inventory management. This wasn't just about hoarding items like a post-apocalyptic yard sale. It was about knowing when to use them, combining them in ways that would make MacGyver proud. This element added a layer of strategy to the game, turning every item into a potential lifesaver, or your next biggest mistake. The game's fixed angle cameras, a hallmark of future survival horror games, added to the tension. These angles, often hiding as much as they revealed, made every turn a leap of faith. It was like playing hide and seek with the boogeyman, except the boogeyman was actually hiding, and he was really, really good at it. But here's where it gets even spookier. The developers were so dedicated to the Lovecraftian theme that they included numerous nods to the Cthulhu mythos. For example, the game settings, Dercito Mansion, is named after a Lovecraftian deity, adding a layer of terror to those in the know. It's like finding out your Airbnb is actually built on an ancient burial ground. But instead of leaving, you decide to stay because wow. you're really into that kind of thing. And in a move that predates modern game design's love for hidden content, Alone in the Dark featured a secret room that could only be accessed by performing a series of seemingly random actions. Inside, players were greeted not by a monster, but by a bouncing box. Why? Perhaps it was a metaphor for the developer's boxed-in creativity, or maybe they just thought it was funny. Either way, it's a weird little secret in a game already overflowing with oddities. When Alone in the Dark crept onto the scene in 1992, it didn't just enter the market, it practically haunted it, setting the stage for what will become a booming survival horror genre. But how did this ghostly pioneer fare in the sales department? While Alone in the Dark was a critical darling upon its release, with reviewers tripping over their words to praise its innovative gameplay, atmospheric storytelling, and groundbreaking graphics, it was like the gaming world had discovered a new dimension and everyone wanted a piece of it. This acclaim translated into solid sales, with the game selling enough copies to spawn a series that's still kicking in various forms to this day. While exact numbers are as elusive as the game's shadowy antagonist, it's clear that Alone in the Dark carved out a respectable place for itself in gaming history. But the impact of Alone in the Dark goes far beyond mere sales figures. This game didn't just open the door for survival horror, it built a whole spooky mansion. It showed developers that games could be more than just fun, that they could be an experience, immersing players in a narrative world that stayed with them long after the credits rolled. The ripples of its influence can be seen in genre staples like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, which owe a tip of the hat to the eerie corridors of Deserto Mansion for laying the groundwork.
In the shadowy halls of gaming history, alone in the dark stands as a beacon, or perhaps more aptly, a flickering candle in the vast dark mansion of the survival horror genre. It taught us that bravery isn't about facing down monsters with a shotgun, but about pushing forward when every fiber of your being wants you to turn back. This game didn't just pave the way for future horror titles, it set the forest on fire, allowing new growth to emerge from its ashes. As we close the creaking door on this tale, let's remember Alone in the Dark not just for the shivers it sent down our spines, but for the bold, creative spark it ignited in a world of video games. It's a reminder that sometimes, to find the light, you have to brave the dark, preferably with a trusty save point nearby. If you enjoyed uncovering the history behind Alone in the Dark, click this video here to get more from the Retro Reload. And as always, thank you for watching.